here we are, First Chronicles. And I know I've been uh, doing the audio Bible because of all the different names, the pronunciations. And you know what? I'm saved by grace, not because I pronounce words. God knows my heart. He knows your heart, brothers and sisters. Today we're in First Chronicles chapter 5. And if you've been following us on the internet, you know, those our teachings are up there. Everything we do from deliverance online, deliverance in person, it's free. In the gospel of Matthew, freely you receive, freely you give. And I praise God that there's even psychiatry and everything else that's going on in the world. They all charge you, by the way. Doctors charge. But this is the only way that really works for people is freely you receive freely you give when you're talking about the spiritual and father you know my heart you know everybody in our prayer group's heart so give me the grace to read the word like i've been doing for years and so be it i'm not upset if i stumble you're not upset because grace is a gift from you we're saved because you died for us, not because we can perfectly read your word or pronounce the Old Testament names. So I pray there's a blessing because we all need to, I, what my, my heart was doing this week is trying to get people, don't be frustrated with the word of God in the Old Testament. Play an audible King James. And open your Bibles and read with it. I'm going to say that to everybody. Practice makes perfect. So enjoy the read today. It's First Chronicles chapter 5. I pray the, the word of God always blesses you coming out of all ministries, all pulpits, Father. I'm putting the light. Let me, and I didn't put my, uh, hold on, let me look at me. Let's see how it looks on screen today. And I need to start video. Because I, let me get rid of this. I don't want to hurt people's heads. But I'm trying to get it so I could just sit in my office chair. So here we go. Father, I pray we hear the word of God. We understand from the word of God and from the little bit again in the commentaries. So my brothers and sisters and myself can get an understanding. And now the sons of Reuben give them eyes to see, ears to hear. And that's what studying is. You go back and you listen to it another time. You, whatever your preference is. You're not going to hell for reading the NIV, the Amplified. I'm tired of all the division that's in the body of Christ when we're saved by grace. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn. But for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. Okay? In other words, it can't be polluted. God's establishing in the first nine chapters, and that's what this is all about. You know, in 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 the the kings, it was the kings. Well, now this is God in the book of Chronicles, divesting to us all the things through these first nine chapters to show us that all the word of God is given for instruction and teaching and it brings us in to the heart and mindset of our god who by the way is our savior he's god too and and that that's something you don't you just receive it by faith so for judah prevailed above his brethren and of him came the chief ruler by the birthright was joseph's Okay, and it's really amazing when you get into Chronicles, you see that 
all this had to go down to to show everyone down the road that Jesus Christ was born of the virgin. The normal way of being fruitful couldn't be done. And, and, and this is the part of the movie that really shows us how much God loves us. And every time I read these chapters and hear these chapters, I thank God for being faithful. You know, we sing that song today, goodness of God. And they're saying to God, thank you, Lord, for being faithful all of my life. He was faithful to the chosen people, and he's faithful to us today. And, and everything we read in the Old Testament brings us into this grace and that we had to have a spotless lamb, a savior. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth fulfilled that in God's word. That was, that was God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, his plan for his creation. Man, it, it gets deep when you understand he will always be with us and love us and forgive us. So... It says here in the word of God, the sons I say of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hanak and Pelu and Hezron and Carmi, the sons of Joel, Shemaiah, his son, Gog, his son, Shimea, his son, Micah, his son, Riah, his son, Baal, his son, Bera, his son, whom Tilgathel Tanasa, king of Assyria, carried away captive. He was the prince of the Reubenites. So here we go. Here in Chronicles, he's given us the, the religious aspects of the Reubenites, you know? And, and it's pretty amazing because this is their genealogy, even though that's why they say Chronicles was one book. And, and they changed it later on. And, and this book is just an explanation of God's faithfulness to all of creation. And it's pretty amazing when you start reading it. And his brethren, verse 7, his brethren by their families, when the genealogy of their generation was reckoned, were the chief uh, Jeriel and Zechariah and Bella the Bala, the son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who dwelt in Aora, even unto Nebo and Baalmia, and eastward he inhabited unto entering into the wilderness from the river of the Euphrates, because their cattle was multiplied in the land of Gilead. So in the days of Saul, they made war with the Hagarites, who fell by their hand. And they dwelt in their tents and throughout all the land of Gilead. Verse 11, and the children of God dwelt over against them in the land of Bashan unto Selka. Joel, the chief, and Shaphan, the next, and Jaina, and Shaphat, in Bashan, and the brethren of the house of the fathers were Michal and Mishalom and Sheba and Jeriah and Jachan, Jachan and Zia and Heber, seven. So there was a count of seven here. And these are the children of Abiahel, the son of Huri, the son of Jeraha the son of Gilead, the son of Mika, the son of Jehizai, the son of Jadu, the son of Buzz, Ahi, the son of Abdiel, the son of Guni, the chief of the house of their fathers in Bashan and in her towns and in all the suburbs of Sharon upon their borders. Verse 17. All these were reckoned by genealogies in days of Jotham, 
the king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. So when we go back to kings, and you see them saying over and over again, as written, well, everything we were reading in Kings, now you're seeing the plan God had, and it was God that kept it all together. That's why we need to walk by faith in, in God. God knows what he's doing. We, we can't even come close to understanding God's ways and our ways sometimes. All we're called to do, once again, brothers and sisters, from my heart to your hearts, from God, who's in heaven, sitting at the throne, listening to me, it's the simplicity of what God did for all of us. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household. You know, when, when you're saved, you don't want to lose your family. You don't want to lose your loved ones. And that's where the the goodness of God comes in through the word of God, because God gives us the narrow road. He gives us the instruction book to be able to win souls. There's nothing we can do apart from God's word, brothers and sisters. Listen to what it says here in verse 18. The sons of Reuben and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh, they were valiant men. And we already know valiant men. Or they they were stand up. David was a valiant man. He was a man called by God. God trained him with wild animals. And he made him a victorious leader. I mean, there's so much to see here. Men, men, men that are able to bear buckler. In other words, valiant means brave. They're they're able to go to war. And most people that are here listening to me right now, other than one that's here that I noticed come in, we were in valiant war with the enemy for many hours yesterday. And that's why the church doesn't understand spiritual warfare. Because a lot of people don't. Churches don't have Bible studies. Some of the ones that don't have the, the inkling, just reading words is not a Bible study. you got to expound on, on God's heart, his mindset. God allows us to recognize sin so that we repent from sin. That's why in 1 John, he says, those that are born again don't continue to sin. Well, we, we all sin, but we don't continue in the sin. We'll never be the same. God brings us in, on his holy mountain. He brings us into repentance. Diligently seeking him, he brings you, you and I into repentance, brothers and sisters. And the valiant men here, it was violence back then in the Old Testament. Shoot with a bow. Buckler, a shield and a sword. They were skillful in what? It says in the word of God this morning, in war. Were four and 40,000, 700, three score. That went out to war. Well, today we're in a spiritual war and one can put a thousand. Think about what I'm saying right now. If you're not spiritual, seek God with all your heart because God's a spirit. The Bible tells us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And, and they were able here because they were valiant. They made war with the Hagarites, with Jitor, Nefesh, and Nodah. And they were helped against them, and the Hagarites were delivered into their hand. And all that were with them, why? Watch what happens here in verse 20. For they cried to God, in the battle. So we got to worship God, praise God, and thank God, even in our spiritual battles. Because the battle belongs to the Lord, people. We cried to God in the battle, and he was entered of them because they what? They put their trust in him. Who is him here? 
God. So the weapons of our warfare today are mighty because what? We need to learn to put our trust in God. And the simplicity is trust and obey people. And they took away their cattle, their camels, 50,000, and sheep, 250,000, and the vast is 2,000 of men are 400,000. And, and 22, because it's only 26 verses today. And you see, I'm smoothly bringing forth a spiritual teaching out of this chapter as I'm speaking today. Why? Because I study. Why? Because I've read these chapters over and over again. I read commentaries. God's an equal opportunity employer, brothers and sisters. I'm speaking from my heart. I'm not looking at the Bible's up here. I'm looking straight at the camera. You know, every one of us has the Holy Spirit. This is being recorded. So when people got to go over by Pastor Mike and everything, it doesn't bother me. We're all in the same body. Grace is grace. Anyone that believes in Jesus Christ is Lord, is our brother and sister. And, you know, families argue. So you got to be able to get along with one another occasionally. It's got nothing to do with loss of salvation or who's right and who's wrong. Because us in, in creation, God's our God. God's our judge. And those that put their faith in Christ are not going to be judged, people. Because we're a work in progress. The good work that God started in you and I, he's going to finish. And you can't finish the walk. Unless you believe in God. Get it? So they took away the cattle. Everything else was not big. But in 22 it says. For there fell down many slain. Because the war was of God. And they dwelt in the steads. Until the captivity. The children of the half tribe of Manasseh. Dwelt in the land. They increased with Bashan. Unto Bel Hermon. And Sinir. And unto the Mount Hermon. And these were the heads. Now he's going back to the story here. For all of us. It's, you, ju you just got to understand. The, I say it over and over again. A lot of preachers. The law was the schoolmaster. Who's our schoolmaster? Jesus Christ. It ends at the cross people. When Jesus said it was finished. He meant it. And the insight is we all, everyone needs a savior. I mean, I, I love singing songs, even though I'm not a singer. And these were the heads. Listen to what it says here in 24. These were the heads of the house of the fathers, even Ephraim, Ishai, Ishai, Elio, Azirio, and Jeremiah, and Hadavia, and Jadio, mighty men. They were mighty men of valor, famous men, and heads. They were heads of the houses of their fathers. So there is a divine order, and it's not women, it's men. And you really want to get serious with this. Read the Old Testament, point the sisters that are involved. I had a sister the other day I pointed to. And she went back and studied, and she says, man, the Holy Spirit convicted me, Pastor. And, and, and you know, I use real time, real words that, that the Spirit of God gives me when I try to illustrate. Right now, I got my eyes closed, and I'm talking to you guys. Let me go back to the finish here so I can go to the commentary. So there's not much there today. Verse 25, and they transgressed against the God of their fathers. And listen to what it says here. This is God's word. Verse, chap, chapter 5, verse 25, First Chronicles. They sinned against the God of their fathers. So nothing new under the sun here. Sin, what is sin, everybody? It's disobedience to God's word. Christians disobey God's word, thought, word, and deed all the time. That's why you have to take the thoughts captive. 
That's why Jesus said, if you look at someone the wrong way, you've already committed sin. You know, it goes a lot deeper than we understand. And that's why we all needed a savior. We all needed the grace of God to rescue us. It's just like I tell people, if you're out in the middle of the ocean, the ocean is bigger than the continents. You can't walk across the United States. And you're not going to swim across the whole ocean. Everybody needs a savior. And he's our savior. He's our life preserver. He's the one that when we're drowning, he throws that little ring into that big, big ocean. And he redeems us. That's a simple way of speaking a parable so that even the simplest of people, even a child could understand that brothers and sisters and they transgressed against the god of the fathers and went pouring after what the gods of the people and it's multiple gods it's multiple temptations and that's what satan's doing is the god of this world and if you if you've got any kind of wisdom in the bible at all it's pretty explicit right here in verse 25 this morning, you got to be able to understand the spiritual and what God is trying to show all of us when we're reading. It's Remember, this, this is God's word. All God's word is for teaching, correcting, and training who? Us, believers, in his righteousness. It's God's word. That's why in the warfare prayer this morning, I, I reminded everybody, it's God's word. Some of the things we speak and some of the things we just keep going on and on in, even myself. Sister Debbie said that to me. Pastor, you got to get this prayer group back in order. There's too many people drifting into things that don't belong here. And, and I'm on a new mission right now because I'm teachable and we're always supposed to be focused because let's face it, people got other things to do. God understands that. That's why everyone needs a savior. We're to be a witness for Christ. I, that's why people sometimes can't be in a prayer group. Sometimes people, their sisters I've talked to that would love to be here, but they have to work. So, and, and I had a brother call me. I haven't seen him in months. Him and his wife and kid are coming to church this week. They've been part of MOS for seven years. Well, the wife has. I prayed for her to have a husband. And her husband, he's another one of these guys like Gerald. He knows how to do everything with computer. I said to him yesterday, I said, Antoine, he, he's invited me to his home to cook. That was many months ago. I haven't gotten there yet. I look at that as there's a lot of people that don't get to the prayer group. I'm okay with that. I only need two people to one and one to agree. And we always have more than one person in the prayer group. You know, our prayer group is about winning souls. Why? Because of the very thing I'm reading to all of us, I'm going to read it over again. So it hits your heart. And they transgressed against the God of their fathers. Well, that's what we do when we sin. We're claiming to be believers. These were Old Testament, God's people that were walking contrary to the teachings from Moses and all the teachings of the fathers of the fathers coming down through the generations that there's a God. That's who Israel, Jacob, was supposed to, the ancestry, the genealogy, and God proves it from the old to the new. It ends up with Joseph and Mary. And Jesus incarnated by the Trinity, by the Spirit. The miracle, the miracles we cry out to God for, cancer, uh, a lame person walking, well, who do you think God is? There was an immaculate move of the Spirit of God because God, God in the flesh had to be pure. I can't tell you how many times in ministry, in ministry and deliverance, people were conceived in lust. I mean, this is deep. 
when you understand and the curse of the bastard and everything else brings so much things to me. Why? Because when you go after the gods of the people of the land, whom God, it says in the scripture here, Elohim, because they were playing the harlot, he destroyed them. Wow, that changes when you understand grace, that God can destroy us the way he destroyed back then. And, and it gives us a heart of repentance that we don't want to come contrary to the word of God and how we think, how we walk, how we do. And, and, and look at this, because this was all done by God. Closing verse today, because and the next tomorrow, it's going to be about the Levites. Closing verse, and the God of Israel stirred, stirred up the spirit of Hul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of Talgath-Benezer, king of Assyria, and he carried them away, even the Reubenites and the Gadites and half of the tribe of Manasseh, and brought them unto Hala and Habor and Hara and to the river of Gozan unto this day. So now I'm dropping my Bible. I, you know, I didn't I didn't intend to read that today, but praise the Lord, you know, because I was getting convicted by the Holy Spirit to sit here and do this. And Here's what it said in the commentary today. It said chapter 5 traces the tribe of Reuben to the captivity. That's why when it started out in the beginning, the, the word of God said, Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as defiled his father's birth, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph the sons of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned with after the birthright. Reckon means you don't play with it. God's really clear here that what he said to Abram and everything else that he's telling us, that's why the word of God is truth. For Judah prevailed upon his brethren and he came to the chief rulers, but the birthright was Joseph's. And that's important when you, you realize where, and, and because it came that way, the Holy Spirit had to create Jesus Christ. He's part of the God. And that's all I could tell people. This verse informs us that Reuben's lost birthright was given to Joseph, not to Judah, However, Judah prevailed, and the ruler came from Judah. Remember who the lion of Judah is today. It's Jesus Christ. But he came out of the line of Joseph. I mean, it's really, because there can be nothing impure in Christ. I, I really, I'm really starting to really enjoy reading my Bible and and getting wisdom from some of the older brothers before us. And, and it goes on here. It says, the record of the tribes of God and half tribe of Manasseh is given until their captivity. And the final two verses give the reason for their captivity. And honestly, that's why you got to read and read and continue to study to understand the heart of God in all situations. And that's what I have and anybody else want that there's only five of us here, my wife's six. My brother Larry's here, good. Because I want to fellowship with Larry this morning. And and everybody else, as I say in Vietnamese, DD Mao. And I'm okay with that. You know, when I told people it was okay to go to their church or their fellowship, it's not like we have different churches, different fellowships. The problem in Christianity today is that they, they all have opinions. And there's a division amongst the denominations. And there's division in, the, the, in, in some of the churches. And God 
God's word tells us one faith, one spirit, one accord. So the devil is working overtime to split all of us up. So God bless you all. That's what I have for everybody that's listening down the road. And glory to God if he has you, those that are on the internet, finding our little ministry and finding some of the stuff we talk about. There's only one name that's got to be lifted up, and that's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is God. He's King of Kings, Lord of Lords. There's no name greater than him. And in him, all things were created. All things, even the angels. And the, what we know about the universe, the galaxies, the sun, the moon, the stars. And I, I just think it's, you know, I played, that was one of the last songs I played at the beginning of the songs today. He's a wonderful, merciful Savior. And I hope hearing this, it'll bless you. Amen.